All right, if you've made it this far through these videos, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you can read. Turns out Python can read too, and one of the easiest things to learn how to open, manipulate, and read files within Python is to take a look at text files. So we're going to snag a text file from the internet here at gutenberg.org, which is the website for Project Gutenberg, makes free ebooks available, uh, mostly for material for which copyright has expired. So one old book for which that's the case is Beowulf, and we're going to grab a copy of that book Beowulf in plain text format, a .txt file from gutenberg.org. I've got the URL for you here. Go ahead and navigate yourself that way or use whatever means you wish to save a copy of that file locally. I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing up on my desktop and we'll pop open idle and make a run at it. All right, so just taking a peek at my desktop here, we see the downloads completed. I got the file, and it's got a bit of a strange name, PG13, rather 16328. Go ahead and leave it named like that. We'll just use that for the purposes of this video. And if you pop it open in Notepad or the editor of your choice, you'll see we got a table of contents to preface moving on to the text. Pretty long file here. And let's pop open idle and see how this goes. All right, so in idle here, we're going to assign a variable called book, and we're going to set it equal to whatever gets returned by this built-in function called open. And to open, I've passed a string, C users, my bring back and desktop, and that text file. And that is just a path to the location of the file on this computer. So you can tell it's a string because, well, it's ingrained in idle, and it's got a single quote on either side. And if I run that line, I don't get anything back. And if I look at book, oh, it's Josh. If I look at book, not Bach. I can see that it's an open file. It doesn't give me a whole lot. So that file though has methods and we're going to look at one of those methods called read lines, which is a whole lot. So we'll say book text or book txt is equal to book dot read lines. And we'll pass that no arguments. Okay, so now we've got this variable book text. All right, and for some of you, there's gonna be a temptation to pass the interpreter to the following command right away. There's book text to take a look at it. I'm going to warn you right now, don't do that because book text is pretty big. It's every single line from that text file. As a matter of fact, we can get just an idea of how big book text is by using that familiar length function. Turns out there's 7,004 lines, and idle will joke on itself just a little bit if you try to look at the whole thing. So let's use our knowledge of subsetting to take a look at book text. Or rather, let's just get a little bit of help on what book text is. So we get an idea of what that function returned. And this should be familiar. This is actually the help entry for lists. So we have a list. It's a list of lines. And we know how to subset, like I mentioned there, uh, lists pretty well. So let's just look at line 0. All right. We got a whole bunch of formatting characters. With start with backslash here. But Project Gutenberg Book of Beowulf or eBook of Beowulf. OK. And if we look at the second line, it's just a new line character, slash n. Look at that third line in there. This ebook is for the use of anyone, anywhere, at no cost, and with... Okay, so these are formatting characters. All right. Additionally, if you wish, you can print slices of that list, get lines at a time, and all those formatting characters look a little bit strange. We'll visit those in a future video, but for now, we have just unlocked a huge feature, which is to say we can read in big text files. And I know that's a simple rudimentary format. Most of you guys are probably work, used to working in something like Microsoft Word documents or other more complicated formats, but for something easy, a text file certainly fits the bill for Python. This is exciting stuff because we can get at this, we can modify this, we can use our list methods to add lines, uh, we could remove things out or change what's in there. And that is super fantastic and awesome. You can get it stuff on your hard drive and change it. Now, of course, all this is just loaded in the memory right now. And in order to make something more permanent, we'd want to save it back. That's going to be the theme for our next video. So this is how you read files. Go ahead, pop open the next one or navigate there on YouTube. Let's learn how to write files next. Again, this is Ed for my bring back. Thanks for spending the time to watch these. Hope that you're enjoying and learning them. Share and encourage other people to watch and learn with you, man. And let's get on to writing.